Hello, good um, good morning, everyone. I hope um, you can hear me well. Probably those uh, in the technical team can confirm. But um, yeah, and welcome to the breakout session on energy storage and, and hydrogen. It's a pleasure for me to moderate this session together with um, with Piero Derva. We will be driving you through through the next hour. So my name is Antonio, and I work for the for the Clean Hydrogen Partnership. Actually, we are a public-private partnership, and for the last 14 years, we've been responsible to manage um, the part of the European Union framework uh, programs dealing with fuel cells and hydrogen. So in an answer, we've managed uh, FP7, then Horizon 2020, and now Horizon uh, Europe. Uh, uh, part of the program, with a focus always on on hydrogen. Now, as were colleagues in Cine and Clima were preparing these sessions, there were a lot of interest um, on hydrogen projects to take part on this uh, event. So I was kindly asked to moderate these sessions, and I really want to thank the the organizers at Clima and Cine for the invitation. Now, this is a workshop to look at synergies between Horizon 2020 and the Innovation Fund. I think probably the fact that we are here, uh, it's already a, a very good example of that and actually it shows the dynamism of, of the exchanges that are happening now across all the Commission services. This is going to be a one hour long session. I heard now in the plenary we will go all the way until 12.35. Uh, and uh, yeah, after we will have to really have a hard stop because we will have to go into the plenary to summarize the the, the outcomes of all the of all the parallel sessions. The presentations and the recordings will be made available on the event website more or less around two days after the event um, finishes. And if you are, of course, uh, keen, and we would definitely ask you and encourage you to to post questions through the Slido. Uh, why? Because that's actually going to drive a lot of the second session of this uh, breakout session where we will answer your your questions. Uh, there are going to be colleagues actually here uh, able to answer specific innovation fund uh, questions about the call for proposals. So, yeah, I think that would be a good chance also for the speakers, by the way, to, to draw questions specifically on, on the innovation fund. Now, with this in mind, uh, I would wondering if we can show the next slide uh, where we will have, I believe, the, the Slido details. Uh, once you connect to Slido, make sure that you enter into the session three, which is the ones that you are present now. I cannot see the slide is moving, but never mind. OK, here we are. So go to slido.to and then you basically select the code, enter the code and select the room number three. So allow me to quickly introduce the, the speakers uh, before I, I go into a bit of an introduction to the session, more from a policy context uh, if you want. So if we go to the next slide, you can see that we will have uh, three speakers. Uh, two of the speakers will be looking at the uh, hydrogen projects, uh, will be presenting the Horizon 2020 projects, uh, one of them looking at developing a full hydrogen ecosystem in the island of Mallorca, that would be Victor Encinas from Enagas. And then we will have Professor Massimo Santarelli, the coordinator of the um, of the remote project, which is looking at the use of hydrogen to power with renewable energy uh, remote communities and of grid uh, locations across Europe. And then very glad also to have Patricia Godel, as she will present the project XCAP, uh, which is looking at the use of super batteries with uh, supercapacitor as a means to to offer better performance battery for mobility applications, but I understand also for um, non-road mobile machinery. So before I give the floor to each of the speakers, I mean, why do we have such a session on energy and storage? I, I think it's clear that having in mind no, the, the carbon neutrality objective for Europe in 2050, we will need more and more renewables in the energy system. I mean, it's clear that uh, due to the intermittent nature of these uh, renewable energy sources, we need to have an energy system that is able actually to cope with this intermittency and we need to increase the storing capabilities of our energy system. Uh, this applies to the power generation uh, sector, but also, of course, to, to the heating to the heating sector. There are different technological solutions already available, but there are still uh, improvements to be done on the performance, and certainly there is a need to do cost reductions as well to diversify uh, and somehow improve the deficiencies of of those systems. 
Now, this is exactly what Horizon 2020 has been doing. It's been supporting research and innovation activities that have uh, targeted the development of new and improved uh, energy storage technologies. Uh, we have uh, projects looking at hydroelectric uh, energy storage, looking at batteries, but also looking at, um, at, at hydrogen. These are all complementary technologies. We all need to look at them uh, in a case-by-case -case basis, and in many occasions they, they, work, um, they work together. So um, if we look now on, on hydrogen, if you want, uh, there is a uh, big now, if you want, push uh, for the use of hydrogen uh, in the European energy system, driven by recent geopolitical events. But I think it was already in 2020 when it was actually a big stepping point with the publication of the European Hydrogen Strategy. The European Hydrogen Strategy uh, sets uh, concrete uh, hydrogen green renewable hydrogen production uh, targets and it actually put hydrogen as a key energy vector uh, when it becomes to decarbonizing uh, hard to bathe sectors. I'm thinking here about energy intens intensive industry, but also heavy duty transport sectors. And more recently, as part of the Repower EU plan, uh, the European Union, Union has announced plans to have 10 million tons of uh, domestic hydrogen produced in the EU by 2030, with an additional 10 million uh, tons uh, of hydrogen uh, imported elsewhere by 2030 as well. And very important as well as part of the Repower EU plan is the, the aspiration, if you want, no, of the European Commission to accelerate the deployment of hydrogen valleys. Hydrogen valleys, uh, to simplify, they are really full hydrogen ecosystems where the use of renewable energy allows to generate uh, green hydrogen, which then uh, can be used to decarbonize end use sectors in the transport, energy, and also in the industrial sector. We are actually in the next years going to be supporting as the Clean Hydrogen Partnership um, the deployment of hydrogen valleys. But if we look at the scales and the speed that we will need to do that, uh, I really see that the Innovation Fund as a key instrument to deliver those scales. And indeed, there are already a number of hydrogen projects being supported in the, in the Innovation Fund. So, I think with all of this in mind, I think I will go into the next uh, part of the presentation. I need to make sure first that we do have all the people in the room. Okay, I can see that we are missing a speaker. So what I will do is I will change uh, the order of the presentations. Please make sure that um, you put the questions. We will look at uh, them as we talk, uh, and then after the presentations, we will address them. If some of the questions are an answer, of course, uh, there is also the possibility to, to send them back after to the Innovation Fund Health Desk. So with this in mind, I'm going to give the floor to Patricia Godel. She was actually the coordinator of the XCAP project, and Patricia is the head of grant financing and risk at the Skeleton Technologies. And she worked uh, before joining Skeleton for three years at, as an innovation lead at RWE, one of the Germany's largest utility. And there she was responsible, if you want, for the relationship between the corporate entity and the startups. So, as I said, Patricia is the coordinator of the XCAP project. And I really pass you the floor now, Patricia, and looking forward for your, for your presentation. Hi, yeah, thank you very much for having me here today. I'm Patricia Godel. I run the public funding team at Skeleton Technologies Group, um, and, and uh, thank you for the kind introduction. I will be talking about the project XCAP today, um, and that brings us already to the next slide, please. <laughs> All right, so um, XCAP, um, XCAP as, as already mentioned, is uh, it's a new energy energy storage technology, um, and we have developed the super battery, which is uh, this thing here. I also have it to show in the camera, <laughs> so it's right there. It's a hybrid capacitor based on supercapacitor technology, um, and um, when you think of the typical lithium-ion battery as a marathon runner, you should think of the, of the super battery as a sprinter. So it's charged in 60 seconds, deals with lots of charging and discharging, and has very, very high power. It's also really sustainable. So no nickel, no cobalt, no graphite, less than 5% lithium. Um, and now I know what you're thinking. Uh, you're thinking, this is super useful. And I will so you show you how useful on the next slide, please. 
All right, so first first use case is a super battery can be used to start hydrogen fuel cells, which I think is most interesting for you guys all here. It's way safer and more sustainable than the current oversized lithium-ion solutions um, that break all the time. And it would also, of course, uh, as all hydrogen, would uh, cut all CO2 emissions from buses and trucks, which is, of course, amazing. And we have customers waiting for that. Uh, right bus is one, one of them. Uh, next slide, please. So second use case, uh, we, can hard, uh, we can decarbonize really uh, heavy, heavy industries. Um, this is a project we're doing with Shell, um, very heavy, big mining trucks. They are huge. They are the size of houses. Each truck cuts the emissions of 11,000 cars, which is um, pretty amazing. And uh, we're very proud of it. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, last but not least. Um, Shipping, cargo shipping, they're even bigger than trucks. We can cut emissions by 10%, which is huge when you consider how much these big cargo ships uh, globally consume. And again, this is one thing that the customers are waiting for. Um, now, uh, of course, I'm here to talk about Innovation Fund, and that's the next, what the next slide is for, please. All right, scaling up is key. We have developed this project uh, within the... Um, the uh, ESC Accelerator Grant uh, to TRL uh, 7. Um, now we need to really scale it up, make it big, um, and that is what the Innovation Fund is for because this scale up is very pricey, very, very pricey, and it is um, it, it comes with challenges and risks, which is why investors are somewhat cautious uh, to, to do this, um, and they price in public funding. So investors actually ask, do you have public funding for that? If, if you say no, uh, no. Um, so, um, uh, we had this experience also with our IPCI project, which is currently running, which is funding our um, supercapacitor uh, factory in Germany. Once we had won the IPCI, the investors came on board. And of course, uh, this, is, this is the same thing now with the super battery factory that has to come. Um, chemistry is really tricky when you scale it up. Um, cell to module is also really tricky when you, uh, as, as everyone knows who has ever uh, done anything in batteries, um, brand new technology, always pretty tricky when you want to automate it. All right. So, um, as I said, uh, this is this is the tough thing. This is what we need the innovation fund for. My time is almost up. What I want to uh, give give you along is that we as Skeleton have already done this with supercapacitors. We can do it with the super battery too. Um, I would like to thank you very much for, for listening to me and for your attention. And on the very last and next slide, you have my contact details. Please feel free to reach out. I'm always very happy to talk to everyone about this sort of stuff, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patricia. And as we are also now waiting one speaker, I'm going to use the chance also that you haven't used uh, the full five minutes. So thank you so much for your brevity. To ask you one quick question, just to, to, to complement. Are you looking, when you mean scaling up, uh, would you be looking, for instance, to use the Innovation Fund to support you in this um, creation of this super factory? Or are you actually looking at the Innovation Fund also as a means to actually deploy the vehicles that would be using your technology? I mean, do, do you have something concrete in mind? Uh, yeah, we we are looking at the factory. So um, we okay. have actually handed in uh, an innovation fund application before, <laughs> sadly rejected for lack of maturity of our company. Um, but I I hope that the last slides with the customer details already showed you that we actually think we are quite mature enough to to handle it. We are building two factories right now, so I think next next round will be will be good for us, and we want to big build a nice big super battery factory with it. Okay. Yeah. That, that's great because I think it, it really illustrates that the Innovation Fund is more than just deploying uh, projects like, like the ones we may have heard before. It's also about supporting to manufacturing, to clean tech manufacturing. So I think this is, is, is great that you could share that to, to bring that angle. Thank you very much, Patricia. I'll ask you to be there, of course, for the full discussions. And now I, I would like to move uh, to the next presentation uh, with Professor Massimo Santarelli. I mean, Professor Santarelli is a mechanical engineer, uh, PhD in thermodynamics and heat transfer, and he's a full professor at the Department of Energy at the Politecnico di Torino in, in Italy. He has a lot of affiliations to universities internationally, and uh, he's been coordinating many, many Horizon 2020, probably FP7, I don't know even if before, 
but certainly he's a coordinator that has been present in a lot of uh, the projects that the Clean Hydrogen uh, Partnership uh, supports. And in this case, he's the coordinator of Remote, which is looking at the use of power-to-power uh, solutions using hydrogen storage uh, combined with battery storage for remote community communities and off-grid location. So, Massimo, the floor is yours, and thank you so much for for being here today with us. Hey, thank you, Antonio, for the kind invitation and the introduction, especially. <laughs> uh, we know Antonio very well since many years, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm talking from Los Angeles at the moment, so it's night, but uh, it's okay. I was prepared. <laughs> uh, Okay, yeah, the introduction has been already done. So we, by kindly by Antonio, so we can go to the next slide. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, the project that uh, I was coordinating with, no, previous slide, sorry. The project that I was coordinating with a uh, big consortium is uh, named uh, Remote. So it was uh, founded by the uh, Fuel Cell and uh, Joint Undertaking, which is now named uh, Clean Hydrogen. Uh, is, is based on the uh, utilization of a storage solution for our communities, let's say. Um, you, you know, when uh, when we go up in size and uh, especially uh, up in, uh, in duration of, of the stories, not day and night, but uh, uh, seasonal, um, summer, winter, uh, probably batteries are not sufficient in terms of, uh, start to be a problem in terms of uh, size and in terms also of cost, as uh, we will see. Uh, so the integration with a chemical uh, uh, storage like uh, hydrogen molecule, which is also sustainable, is a, a good solution. So in this project, we have uh, analyzed uh, a remote, uh, we started with a remote, um, remote application, which are probably the first user in this type of uh, solution, in which the local uh, user were fed uh, all, the, all the way, all the hour of the, of the computer year with, uh, only with renewable. Uh, thanks to the integration of our storage system based on uh, hybridization of batteries and uh, hydrogen system. So here we have uh, tested the three, uh, three plants, one in, uh, in different locations in Europe, one in uh, Norway, as you see, uh, one in uh, Greece and one in, uh, in uh, Spain, in Canary, in Canary Island. The size, uh, as you see, is, uh, of the system is around 100 of, uh, kilowatt. So this is one of the points. Uh, we can say small size. I have also reported here a, a description of the cost uh, at the present cost of the technology, so not as a projection. Uh, this type of system, as you see, uh, in, in this type of application, so remote, are already interesting, uh, already positive, uh, even compared to the classical diesel, uh, diesel engine that is used as a genset for this type of uh, community. So uh, after uh, seven years of, uh, of application, there is the complete recovery of the cost compared to a diesel engine. Of course, uh, uh, there is all the, all the evaluation about the uh, environmental uh, good aspect. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so what is uh, um, what exactly is required? As I told you, the, the technology is, is already available uh, and demonstrated. So it's totally demonstrated, as you see in this picture and in the Greece uh, application, at the scale of uh, which is small uh, medium. So of under the kilowatt to one megawatt. At the same time, the potential uh, market is uh, really not, is really big. So we can move from off grid solution, so island, remote island, remote area, as I told you, but also isolated microgrid, so uh, um, area which are connected to the grid but based on renewable. But I, I can go over a small energy district inside municipalities, not only remote area. And finally, grid balance of smart grid solutions. So you see the, the market is huge and especially is, is, uh, uh, can be done in different areas of the world. So what is really needed is uh, to support uh, the scale up of this uh, technology uh, from uh, the scale of uh, one, around one megawatt, let's say, to and the tens and the hundred of megawatt, which is now the real requirement of the market. And uh, they uh, be, be put a big attention to the system integration. So these are uh, the real need of this uh, solution that works. Uh, we demonstrated to work at uh, a small, medium scale. Uh, so next, next slide, please. And uh, uh, so the next slide, uh, I go to the um, mm, yeah, next slide. Sorry. Ah, okay. So um, why innovation found? Oh no, previous one. Uh, why innovation found? Um, the previous. Yeah, uh, I. No, this has been already done. Next one. <laughs> Sorry. 
Exactly. So the, it seems to me that this type of project, uh, I mean, of technology is really complying with the target of Innovation Found. The business is global. And uh, and uh, if you consider, it seems a niche market, it is not. Thousands of uh, uh, islands and mountain community are uh, populated around the world and that rely you know, normally on diesel engines. Uh, we have calculated that only in the island we can consider that uh, around 750 million people uh, live in the area uh, in, the, in the island. We can consider all, all the mountain not included and all the area which are uh, also in the municipalities. So the, the business is really, really global. And in terms of CO2 uh, mitigation can, is also huge. Can be uh, we calculated of around 1.5 gigatons of CO2 every year. So a large amount of uh, a significant amount of CO2 emissions. So it's a global business related to uh, um, a global market that can save a lot of CO2. So I think is uh, uh, compliant with the target of Innovation Found, which uh, focus, uh, as we know, on uh, innovative technology and uh, with sign- which can allow significant emission reduction. Uh, so that's why oh, this interest in innovation found. So next why, uh, next slide, sorry. Okay, to conclude, uh, what has to be done in terms of to promote? I think that uh, we have uh, first to individuate uh, the best and the and the suitable end uses. So the site where we can make installation of this type of uh, uh, system, especially at large size. Uh, where we can have positive business case. So we have to make a first a map uh, and to individuate site of the world and the specific site in the world where uh, we can have already now a positive business case. Uh, po- probably the most suitable uh, of application of this uh, uh, power to power energy uh, storage system will be uh, maybe in area uh, where uh, the need of this type of storage uh, system will be higher, like in Africa in Asia, in a part of Australia and South America. So I think this uh, can be targeted uh, in terms of mapping what is the uh, suitable uh, place to, to install. And after this, we can move to uh, uh, optimization of the of the solution, of the technical solution that are already available, but can be, uh, I mean, targeted for this type of area and go to generate positive business case already with the cost of the technology uh, available now. Not considering that in the coming, in, the coming eight, seven, eight years, so from now 2030, the cost of this technology related to hydrogen are uh, considered to, to decrease uh, um, significantly thanks to the higher deployment and the higher investment in the in the sector. Uh, so I see positive aspect in dissemination in this area of the world of this type of solution uh, generated in Europe. And uh, okay, so next slide, I think that this can be the end of my presentation and uh, I'm available for questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Massimo, for, for this. I mean, you, you've mentioned no, the, the potential of this uh, technology, so abroad, not only in Europe. Uh, and I was wondering, actually, uh, maybe we can tackle this later. I don't know if there is anyone from, from the Innovation Fund that could step in, but could, could the Innovation Fund, for instance, support European companies uh, to develop the technology, but then to have deployment beyond Europe? Uh, I don't know if that's something that would be that would be possible to do. I don't know if anyone out there from... Yeah, Carla, thank you so much. Please feel free to to step in eh, at any time. Thanks. Uh, Thank you very much and thank you very much uh, for the presentation. So just to say that on the Innovation Fund, we are very clear in terms of uh, the scale up and whether or not it can happen outside the EU. For now, the Innovation Fund itself only... um, uh we have only the projects are only eligible if they are in the territory of the eu so if you have projects to have factories or uh, hydrogen storage outside of the eu for not the innovation fund is not the right um is not the right fund but of course as my colleague uh, piero is mentioned it in the chat you have many other options we are not the only fund uh, out there so you have many other options uh, from DG Neo, DG Inpan, notably uh, Global Gateway is one of them, for example, where you can have such supports uh, for Africa, South America, etc. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I think that that's helpful. I mean, I'm sure there are, and I know there are uh, uh, ways and, and, and needs to apply these systems within Europe as well. But it's good to to clarify that. And, yeah, and, and I believe, if I, yeah, sorry, of course, if I can say, please. Yeah, no, of course. Uh, uh, not to be misunderstood, in Europe is, is, is rich, still rich of uh, 
area where we can make this type of installation. I know. <laughs> so it's not uh, know. limited. Probably there, are, there will be a good business case out of Europe for co companies producing in Europe and uh, exporting the technology. But uh, yeah, before that, uh, we can test yeah. significantly and install significantly also in Europe. So. And in fact, uh, I mean, there are three, I believe, demos now in, in, in remote. I, I am aware that following the demo campaign of some of these demos, they are actually already having conversations to expand. So probably yeah. that could be also very interesting to, to go through the innovation fund to actually scale up some of these some of these systems. So th thanks a lot. I Let me put the questions to, um, to the technical team. I believe that the third speaker is not yet with us. I'm just checking the chat and I believe that he's having some technical issues. The person from Enagas on behalf of the Green Highland Project, the uh, the Valle in Mallorca. So unless I'm told that he's here, I think what I will do is we will w wait a little bit. Exactly, we still do not have him. So we will go now into a little bit of, 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 of putting some questions. Again, uh, you in the audience are welcome to send questions to the Slido. Uh, I do not see yet any questions uh, there, but uh, I rely on you, Piero, to 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 let me know if there are any questions that I don't see. I don't think that's the case. You have here now in the slide the, the way to send your questions, slido.com, and then you put the code Horizon 2020 Innovation IF Synergies. So with this in mind, and, and I wanted to maybe bring a question to you, uh, both Patricia and Massimo. Uh, it's been said before that now there is in, in the new calls of Horizon Europe, this phrase no, that uh, somehow puts an emphasis to develop uh, business models. And feel free to put the camera, eh, Massimo and, and Patricia, because I, I think that could be maybe easier. Uh, and we've seen this, uh, this, we heard this morning no, about the importance to have uh, sound business plans that somehow could lay down no, the the way forward to to applying, of course, to the innovation fund, but not only. We know that this is very important element of all r &E projects, but I wanted to know how ready how ready you are for in this case for instance maximo i mean are you already in a position where you see that the business plans you are putting together could and encourage you to go and apply to the innovation fund i mean where are you in this process are you having concrete plans actually to do that and and how are you going about the the development of these business plans okay the microphone yes as i as i told you is a First, uh, start from the point of view of the economy. Uh, this this type of system uh, we have demonstrated that uh, in some type of application are already profitable now. So without waiting, as I told you, on the significant decrease of the, the cost of the economy that we expect to have in the next uh, seven eight years. So already now, because uh, in some part of the uh, of the application area, uh, the island, uh, some mountains, uh, some isolated. Um, um, part of the countries, like in the uh, application in Greece, far from the main uh, grid, uh, to produce electricity there uh, is costly, even if you use diesel. So, uh, and will be more costly in the future, even not consider the, the pollution. Uh, so, there are already business cases available in large part. I mentioned out of Europe, because it probably will be a good point for the, uh, um, I mean, the European industry in terms of uh, export, but. There are several applications in Europe still available. <laughs> of course, is, uh, not, uh, we are not uh, totally uh, uh, covered in, the, in, the, in Europe. Uh, okay, so this is the first point. The second point is that, uh, yeah, the, now the, what, what we have uh, demonstrated that the 100 of kilowatt size is uh, probably is, uh, is something that which is not sufficient. Uh, if we go to Ireland, uh, the local community asks uh, much more. So we are for sure uh, needed to go to tens of megawatt. Uh, in this sense, uh, uh, of course, we are receiving a lot of uh, um, a lot of communication from uh, from companies, uh, from uh, requirement from companies, from local communities, also from municipalities. There are municipalities that we want to change. Municipality, I mean, not not remote. What want to change the the situation of uh, sustainability of the city or district inside the city using innovative solution. Uh, so using local renewable uh, supported by storage. There are the energy communities, no? The energy communities are a phenomenon which is uh, increasing a lot, I can say, in Italy, but I think also out of Italy. So, yeah, there are a lot of uh, a lot of requests from one side. On the other side, there are companies that are uh, going to produce uh, technology which are targeting this type of uh, uh, size. So, 
lethal laser and the uh, field set that are going to and storage that are going to to target the tensor megawatt. I think that uh, what is needed is to is to match, no, uh, to match between a uh, big amount of requirement, interest, uh, and so on, and on the other side, companies that are making uh, an effort in order to put the uh, the size of this type of system and the reliability of this type of system at the level of uh, that of me um, sorry tens of megawatt. Uh, I am, of course, a university professor. I am not in a company, but I, I am in. I, I, I can say a cross request from one side and the technology from the other side. I can say that the the situation is very uh, uh, positive at the moment in terms of uh, interest. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Massimo. And I use this chance to um, to reply to sorry to use the slido for those following the the room. And before I go into some specific questions, actually, on, on the Innovation Fund, I wanted to ask you, Patricia, I mean, you've mentioned that you are quite familiar with the Innovation Fund. Uh, you said that you are going to, um, of course, seek applying uh, to complement, I understand, uh, support that you already had some way secure on the back of the IPSIS using national funding. Uh, can you share a little bit maybe with us how, how is this combination of funding? I mean, on the one hand, I heard from you in your presentation that you did have already some um, secure financing within the context of your national funding, but now I also understand that you will apply for the Innovation Fund. So what could you share on, on that experience of how to combine funds and how is the Innovation Fund suited for, for that? Yeah, happily so. Um, so what we have done in the IPCI with the national funding uh, from the German government is to um, support our scale up of the super capacitors. So our project, the product that is already in the market and, and running very well. Um, and now we are looking, of course, to also scale up the super battery, which is our next product generation, which is the one that we, we developed in the XCAP project. So it's essentially um, two separate projects, separate products, one super capacitors, one super battery, um, and the, the the national funding, the um, IPCI is supporting the super super capacitor, and we are now looking for something similar and complementary for the super super battery. Um, we are looking at the innovation fund here because one of the one of the um, very nice special things about the innovation fund is that the innovation fund allows additional um, funding. Um, public funding also to come in without getting into this double funding sort of trouble, which is, of course, if you want to scale up really large, um, um, you need different funding sources. Um, this goes, of course, in addition to, to private investors who are currently saying, OK, a bit risky because we don't know how the scale up is going. Technology is very new. Um, but of course, once the, the public funding is there, the investors will be very happy to to, uh, to contribute there as well. As I said, very similar to the current situation we did in the IPCI, where we won an IPCI grant of 51 million euros um, for our super, uh, super, super capacitor production. And then um, the, the rest was um, was contributed by, by public finances um, as well. So that's a, that's a really good combination for especially a smaller um Quite new companies like us. We are not. We're not very, very old. We we've been around for for 18 years now, um, and in Germany only for uh, for seven or so. So um, um, in the scale up phase, pretty difficult, of course, to get invest investments. So for us, it's it's uh, these public funding instruments are actually absolutely vital to get our scale up up going. Which I think it, it illustrates something interesting because I mean I understand you you got the the support for the XCAP project on the back of the EIC. Uh, I guess it yes. was some kind of uh, dedicated support to SMEs probably, uh, if I'm correct or not. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now you are really looking now to really scale up. So going really yeah. from that SME uh, mono beneficiary support uh, to a scale yeah. up massively with the innovation fund. So I think that to be honest a, a great example no of how Two instruments very targeted, the, the first one and, and the other one uh, can actually now help you to go to the big, uh, yeah. the bigger scale. And if then you say that there is actually this uh, flexibility no, of the use of different fundings coming from different funding stream without this issue on the double funding, which I know, uh, especially on the Horizon 2020, Horizon Europe projects now, it mm -hmm. is difficult. I mean, in, to implement synergies on those with national programs can become sometimes tricky. I think it's a very good uh, message, I I think. so. Yeah, and I mean, we have yeah. grown quite a bit, right, from the when we applied for the XCAP project, 
we were, I think, 60 people, and now we are almost 200. So that's wow. that's quite nice. Yeah. Wow, indeed. So thanks for that. And, and I'm going to use actually the chance because I, I rather that uh, this is colleagues on the Innovation Fund first to think about if you have any specific questions, both Patricia and, and Massimo for colleagues in the Innovation Fund team that are here today also in the in the breakout session. I mean, you said, Patricia, for instance, you are thinking to apply, you did apply. So if you have questions for, for her, feel free to, to think about it and, and mention in them. And I was also wondering, Carla, if you could give maybe uh, some details about the upcoming calls actually on the on the Innovation Fund that maybe would be also of interest uh, for the audience beyond what has been said today. Uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, I think, uh, Patricia, you already know about the, the large-scale call that's currently open till the 16th of March, and I think you had a uh, a presentation on this where, where we have three billion euros and, and four different topics. Uh, and I see that yours would notably fit under manufacturing or the general decarbonization or the, or even the pilot, depending, of course, of where you are. But if it's fully scaled up, maybe not pilots. Uh, but on the, in terms of the upcoming, we try to have annual calls for large scale and small scale. Of course, uh, we also have uh, this will also be depending on, uh, it might slightly change because we just had uh, ETS negotiations and because the fund is funded by the ETS, it, there might be slight changes on that. But basically we have uh, still the small scale call that's going to be open on the 30th of March as well and will be closed on the 19th of September. Uh, and it will be very close to the small scale call that we've had, the two that we had previously. Uh, so this is more uh, this is more targeted, of course, to smaller projects. So with a maximum capex of seven point five million. Uh, but um, uh, if, of course, you have projects that are more fitting under this uh, this kind of call, uh, they are very welcome there. And uh, because the eligibility uh, is the same, uh, we also uh, do the same Katia. It's just uh, we try to simplify as much as we can because those are smaller projects with so usually SMEs and smaller companies. So we try our best to have simplified uh, kind of applications for those uh, types of projects. I mean, Thank if you, you don't mind me, uh, me sort of immediately <laughs> asking then. Of course. So, so, uh, um, so we've we've looked into the pilot and also the small scale, and I, I think it's not gonna it's not gonna be enough enough for what we are planning. We are we are looking um, at pretty pretty capex heavy investments here, so um, we will have to go with the with the large scale, and we um, we already know that this time uh, in March it's deadline is too tight. So in December, we looked at it and decided, okay, we'll not be able to, because it, it is very time consuming. It's a small company, small team. So we have to, have to, um, so we were thinking more going towards applying next year, um, where we are expecting this to also be in, in March again, I, I would uh, assume, or round about then. Um, and my question would be, um, I know that from the previous year to this year, there were some changes in the templates and there are changes in the templates all the time. And for us, really important would be to know, will there be changes again in templates and criteria and so on? And when would we know about it? Because, of course, if we start working now using the templates from 2023 and then next year they're going to be different, that would be uh, pretty awful for us, <laughs> of course, since, especially since we have to get this all um, uh, notarized, uh, both the greenhouse gas and the, and the uh, budget. Thanks. Thank you. I think on, on this, I will let my, my colleagues from CNEA compliment because they're actually the ones that are evaluating. But of course, in terms of the big picture, at least from the side of DG Klima, there's not a lot of talk about massively changing uh, GHG for large scale. I mean, for GHG uh, emissions, but this is really under the remit of my colleagues in the GRC and CNEA, so I won't pronounce myself on their side of the story. Um, and of course, I think the, the main changes I was talking about is rather because we now have to um, have medium sized coal or somehow medium sized projects. Um, so this is something that uh, might come in, but it, it wouldn't impact the large scale basically coal. Um, but maybe here also on the cost, the relevant cost calculation, I know my colleague Christophe is here. So if Casey wants to talk a little bit about that and give more information if he has them. Hi, Clara. Good morning. 
Well, on the relevant cost side, we tried to streamline for the next large call, I mean, the methodologies we had uh, to make it quite, out, we hope, simpler for the applicants. Uh, we also tried to integrate the relevant cost with the financial uh, model summary sheets so that uh, we avoid some I mean, incurrences or issues in the volumes and in the figures used um, to, to reduce, I mean, the probability of failure for the different projects. So hopefully, I mean, all of that will contribute to a higher success rate in financial maturity. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much you. for that. We, I would like to to bring actually one one question. If that uh, uh, has been answered already, Patricia, that I saw now in in the slide, which is uh, if there is anyone that could explain a little bit more. I mean, we heard this morning. I think it was Alan probably uh, on this uh, topic, right? That is now open in Horizon Europe, which has a deadline of 18th of April, and as far as I understand, it's a CSA, a Coordination and Support Action which is calling for consortia of Horizon 2020 projects to put themselves together and to prepare applications or projects that could be funded by the Innovation Fund. Uh, I mean, I can see, to be honest, some of our projects. We have here one, for instance, uh, with Massimo Remote. I can think about others. But is there anyone from from the Innovation Fund team that could explain a bit more on this topic? I'm not sure. I don't want to put you in a compromise, but I, I don't know the details of the topic. So I wonder if anyone could uh, comment on this. Um, I have to say I don't remember this exactly because I, I was I was in the Horizon Europe team for the work program twenty three twenty four. So I think it's actually my my colleague uh, Philip Hawkins who who just succeeded on to with me on on this CSA topic because well one of the things that we try to do is in, indeed increase the synergies between Horizon Europe and and in the innovation fund and this uh, this. Um, um, this uh, kind of uh, event is exactly what we're trying to do. What we've done is also streamline within the work program, uh, basically kind of uh, doing a re whole review of the work program and see which kind of research topics are already kind of in the eligible sectors of the Innovation Fund and put a special mention, mention for them to to actually uh, prepare some of the of the documents that they would need for an innovation fund project kind of in advance and putting a hook there. So I think this CSA is in the exact same vein as what we've tried to do in the in the workshop where basically we have oh yes, we have this special CSA in, in a few uh, sectors that are eligible where basically this is a, a help for successful Horizon 2020 projects like yours. Uh, that want to apply for the fund but might not have enough to enough resources no no enough uh, to, put, to, um, to put them together basically yeah okay no but that that makes sense and I think we should certainly make sure this topic is known to to our community at least no the hiding community because as you say probably there is a lack of resources time even knowledge not to be able to put that uh, innovation fund application together and and i think if by this consortia building that can help it, it's something that i believe could be very very interesting so thanks thanks for that and i'm told and we are going to try to to give the floor to Victor, I uh, sorry that you have so many technical travels, Victor. I understand you are now connecting on the phone, so thank you for that. Uh, if there is any technical glitch, I, I apologize uh, to the audience, but let, let's try because I, I definitely think it's uh, very useful and, and it will be very nice to hear from you. Uh, Victor actually is uh, working at Enegas, uh, who is the, um, the company that is coordinating the Green Highland project which is developing a hydrogen ecosystem in the island of, of Mallorca, first of its kind, uh, and certainly first of its kind if we look at the south of, of Europe. And Victor is a mechanical and materials engineer. He has a PhD on renewables energy, and he's been working for 10 years actually in, in project management also at a European level. And yeah, like I said, he's working for Enagas Renovable, and now he's going hopefully to present us the, the Green Highland project and to see how the Innovation Fund could uh, could help you. So, Victor, hope you, you are ready for it.
probably we haven't sorted out the technical issue. But it's okay. Then I think I will I will continue until we kind of get this connection back. Maybe what I can do because I'm actually quite familiar with the project. I don't I don't want to venture to to present the slides myself. But what I would like to do is to bring some reflections as well as I can see that there is a lot of projects that uh, we are supporting and I understand also other parts of Horizon Europe are doing the same and and, and the point is the same and, and maybe that's also a reflection Can for for something. Yes. Victor, Someone is Victor. Ah, Victor is here? Can you speak Victor? No, I don't hear anyone. Okay. No. Okay, I don't hear. Maybe feel free, Victor, eh, to talk, and then I will stop talking when when I hear you. But otherwise, I will continue for the sake of time as well. Are you there? No. Okay. So what I wanted to bring on the back of the Green Highland project, uh, I mean, I said the project is developing a hydrogen ecosystem in the island of Mallorca and actually is getting support from Horizon 2020. Hello, Victor. No, I don't think it's going to work, so probably we we should... Uh... No, I... I... Okay. No, I, I think I will because as we have only ten minutes left, probably it's best if I if I continue the session. Um, and what I want to say, I mean, this project is is deploying a it's a demonstration project, and actually it, it, it is putting forward. Uh, well, basically, through the, the clean hydrogen, we, we don't need the slides. Maybe leave this slide here. This is fine, but just explain to the audience what this is about, actually. And, and the project is, um, well, is relying on, on, a, on, on renewable um, energy, renewable power generation uh, to feed electricity to an electrolyzer, uh, through which you can actually use water to obtain hydrogen, in this case, green hydrogen, because we are using renewable energy. And then the hydrogen is meant to distribute uh, across the island to different end uses, so mobility, energy, also injection of hydrogen in the gas grid. I mean, this is a limited size project, if you want. Of course, first, uh, we need to see that things are working. Uh, this project has a overall funding of around 10 million euros. The project investment are larger. Uh, than that, uh, probably in the order of 30, 40 millions. But what I wanted to understand, and, and, and that's a question also I'm looking at, at colleagues in the Innovation Fund. Now we have a pilot project in, in Horizon 2020 uh, that is actually now becoming functional. We have already the electrolyzer being commissioned. We will have the first buses uh, arriving soon. Actually, one of them is, 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 is probably already there. Do you see this expansion of such a system uh, something that could fit within the innovation fund. Uh, and actually, if that was the case, is there, are there any restrictions, if you want, when it becomes? Let's think, for instance, that the project would want to expand. Could they say, I would like to apply funding for a part of this ecosystem, maybe for the hydrogen distribution infrastructure only? Or should they come up with a package where they actually apply? No, you need to also uh, integrate the production uh, plant all the way with the distribution infrastructure and include the end user. I mean, wh what can the Innovation Fund offer and how could it work out not to say this project is finished, is successful, I want to span, how can I use the Innovation Fund? Is that something that could work? Uh, and I'm looking at you again, Carla, for, for that. Maybe to give some, uh, some uh, for, for my colleague Lorena, because she's the Lorena. one that... Uh... Yeah, Go ahead. Sorry for that. <laughs> no worries. Because I, I see yeah, a lot of projects could relate to that, to be honest. We are now starting to support nine additional valleys uh, as of May. We have another ongoing project deploying other technologies, and I really think they could benefit. But I would like to know if you would consider that innovative enough, as it has already been somehow demonstrated in Horizon Europe. So how could we go? Lorena, I, I leave the, the yeah. floor to you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, indeed, if, if the project has already been demonstrated and it's scaling up it's innovative enough to be a candidate for the innovation fund so it's indeed if they have built already a pilot it gives a proof of maturity of the project so 
it will be seen as more mature project and with this potential of scaling up. So it's really the intent to scale this project is a good candidate for the innovation fund, the large scale call. Yeah, indeed. I, I don't hear you, Antonio. Sorry. <laughs> My apologies. No, sorry. And I wanted to say, imagine they do have some funding, right, uh, coming from the national uh, funding on the back on the back of the uh, of, of other um, European funds, and they secure, let's say, production uh, funding for the production plant, which then they could and would like to complement with innovation fund uh, funding for other parts of that, let's say, ecosystem, like the distribution of hydrogen infrastructure or additional end users. Is that combination something that could be done? It is to say you are supported some part of that through the national funding and other parts with the innovation fund. Uh, and if that's the case, how would it fit within the innovation fund requirements? I don't know if you are uh, asking to have renewable energy capacity as part of the application or if it would be combined and, and broke down. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. If if it's the project is just about infrastructure, so distribution infrastructure distribution, it will not be eligible for the innovation fund as it yeah. a standalone project. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it's integrating some of the parts, production or end users, then it will be a candidate. As mentioned, also as mentioned this morning. Um, uh, the innovation fund allows uh, combine different uh, funding. Uh, mechanism. So the only proof they have, I mean, the only condition they have to prove that is not accumulation on the funding uh, mechanisms. Okay. I don't know okay. if uh, it's clear. Okay, so there is that possibility, which then it, it somehow opens the door for these projects to already, once they come to their more advanced stages, to think about how they could uh, use this uh, the innovation fund as well, which, which I think some of them are actually already in this dot, and I understand Green Highland in, in, in particular is. So, okay, and and maybe as before we move, because I'm aware also of time, we are 12.30, uh, I'm sorry that we could not get uh, victory, but... Um, uh, Massimo, I mean, you've heard that it's going to be now, um, well, probably the large scale call. Uh, it's going to be uh, somehow way too large for, for scaling up the technology in remote. But I also heard from you, I think it was you, Carla, referring to a call that will be open at some point in March uh, up to the autumn this year for, for the small scale. Uh, is there, probably I know the answer, but just to, to make sure, what was the threshold of the project that uh, could apply to this small scale? Was it seven? Ah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's seven point five million euros, capex. Yes. Seven point five million euros. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And is that something, Massimo, you, you are contemplating? I mean, I, I hear some of the demonstrators within the remote that are looking to expand. I mean, is that something you are maybe considering uh, to look at the, the, the innovation fund on that sense? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yes. This the this size of uh, uh, capex. Uh, can allow already a scale up to the number that I I discussed before. So we are going with the present cost of the technologies of this type of technologies around hydrogen. I mean, uh, we are going to the level of uh, around 10 mega, what let's say. So okay. uh, roughly, just to give an idea. So yeah, this type of uh, uh, call uh, seems very very good to scale up from the hundred of kilowatt that we already did uh, to the more interesting level of. Uh, around uh, one one uh, one tenth of kilowatt, I say one megawatt, ten megawatt. So yeah, definitely we are uh, probably going to to make a, a proposal. Okay, perfect. Thanks, thanks for that because I think I we will need now to end. But I, I get quite a lot of things. I think uh, I learn. Uh, we have five minutes left now. I, I'm told so probably. We will go now into the into the closing uh, stage. But no, indeed, I, I learned quite a lot this morning, oh, and, and I think now I, I'm really now picturing quite clearly, you know, how the innovation fund could actually support uh, uh, somehow not only maybe, which is what I had in mind, projects that become a certain product to a mature level. So what happens next? Then the innovation can, fund can step in. But I think now the conclusion for me is really that 
it can actually support, and there is this line to, to support clean tech manufacturing, and, and we heard from, from you, Patricia, your experiences, which to me was quite uh, enlightening because I was not so aware that the Innovation Fund was actually supporting also manufacturing projects, but then also the way in which some of the demo first-of-its-kind pilot projects in Horizon Europe could see uh, and could benefit from the Innovation Fund to expand, actually. And, and as I said, I, I'm aware there are some hydrogen projects in the Innovation Fund currently, so so that's, uh, that's welcome. And maybe just to say that, that synergies with the Innovation Fund are already happening. I mean, I just mentioned that there are hydrogen uh, projects in the Innovation Fund. We've been supporting technology development for the last 14 years, and we know that the technology used in these projects is actually coming thanks to the support of the European Union in, in the framework programs for research and innovation. So somehow the synergies are happening in, in this way. I think today we, we could picture some more concrete ways of of, uh, of continue supporting this project, including the CSA topic, which I definitely uh, would take with me and, and make sure we disseminate to, to our community. Now, Patricia and Massimo, uh, I want to thank you, but before we go, do you have any last point to make before I close this session and we move to the plenary? Uh, no, I would just thank you very much for your, for your time and attention and for the helpful discussion. Uh, very exciting to hear about all the cool projects going on. Thanks. Thank you so much to you, Patricia. And, and Massimo? Yeah, the same. Uh, also for me, it's been uh, really interesting because uh, yeah, this instrument is really powerful uh, for projects that uh, we usually manage that now needs more bigger scale. Yeah, is, uh, this is the, what is needed, really. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. Been, uh, also for me, really interesting. Thank you. Thank you so much. And of course, Carla, and Lorena and, and, and all the team that was uh, backing up a bit on, on the details of the Innovation Fund. Thank you so much for your contributions and, and also Piero. I'm not sure whether the Slido uh, is being very, very active, but I really hope that at least uh, the audience uh, listening got some concrete ideas of, of how actually to, um, to go about and applying to the Innovation Fund on this area that we, that we discussed. As I said, energy storage, hydrogen, I mean, key elements uh, on this energy transition. There is no way we will get uh, so much renewables if we don't find the means to, to store it. And there are many, many propositions for that. So, so indeed, all accommodated in the, in the Innovation Fund. So, yeah, thank you again. We will break up. Uh, I leave the details to the technical team. Hopefully, I will be automatically driven to the plenary as I will have to summarize this session. Uh, and yes, the presentation will be available online. You can send questions to the Innovation Fund Help Desk and actually you can get feedback as well. Sorry, you should and I can ask you to fill in the feedback form uh, at the end of the, of, the, of the plenary. And here you have the, the QR for going back to the, to the plenary. Thank you all of you and indeed I, I will close now the session. Thank you everyone. Thank you Massimo and Patricia, Carla and Lorena. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.